Oh, there it is. I was like, oh no, I forgot to turn it on. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good? Some of you are good. Some of you haven't heard anything I've said yet. Perfect. Just like every day. I am so glad to see you guys today. If you're watching us online today, um, you may, we've heard your cries. We've tried to increase the volume of this microphone so you can hear the teaching portion a little bit better. So uh, if you're watching us online, leave a comment. If you notice a difference, uh, we hope that you do. We are, we are working to make that a good experience for you. But it would be better if you were here. And so for those of you in the room today, welcome. I'm glad to see you. I uh, see a few faces I haven't seen in a while and a few faces I haven't seen before. Uh, and I can't wait to greet you in just a little bit when we move to our greeting time. Um, I have uh, quite a few announcements. Some things are happening. But before we get to that, if our ushers could come and take offering today. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, now, if you the plate is going by and you miss it, uh, you can always give online. Uh, or if you have to write a check and you miss the plate, I know that happened last week, somebody missed it. Uh, you can put it in the offering box on your way out the door today. Uh, or you could scan that code and get our app and schedule your online giving. Um, that's one of the easiest and best ways to, to do it. Because not only can you give online with the app, but you can also see our church calendar. And uh, as we move to the Christmas season and you want to get addresses and names for Christmas cards, um, we have a church directory available there. And many more of you are adding yourselves to that directory, and I appreciate that. But a few things that you guys need to be aware of that may not be on the app. The first one, uh, I've, I've got a few of these shirt uh, order forms um, turned in to me, but they are due today. We are going to go down to the warehouse on Mercer Street and turn this in tomorrow so they can start our orders. Uh, you can still order them after today, uh, but we are taking our first batch down tomorrow. So if you wanted to order a shirt and you forgot, uh, you can fill out one of these on the information center and just get it to me today, or you could fill it out and drop one off here at the church later, uh, just drive by after lunch or whatever, and we'll get these uh, ordered tomorrow. All the information you need to know is on the paper. A uh, few other things to this evening. Uh, small group, our, our small group experiment continues tonight at Yvonne and Greg's at 5.30 p.m. And we strongly encourage that you bring some snacks to share. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful time. Uh, we thank you. They had to take a few weeks off for Thanksgiving and much other stuff, but they are ready to get back in the swing of things, at least for now. And then they'll pick up again in January. So, um, it's a wonderful experience. If you haven't got a chance to go, uh, you definitely want to try to check it out. Some other things happening. Uh, our youth group is continuing our fundraiser at the Bluefield Holiday of Lights, and that is Fridays and Saturdays from 6 to 9.30. Um, I know they've been selling all kinds of different things. So maybe I talked about the cake cups, and maybe you're like, well, I'm not really into cake. Well, now they're selling cinnamon rolls and pumpkin rolls and reindeer chow and all kinds of other yummy things. So maybe you checked it out once. You can check it out again. Like, there's more stuff. It's constantly changing. If you want to know what the youth group is selling, then uh, ask a youth group parent, and they'll let you know. Uh, but that is continuing until January 6th as well. We've been doing some math, and in order to send our students to International Youth Convention this summer, we need about uh, another, for every student and parent who's currently talked to me, for everybody to go without having to spend anything out of pocket, we still need about $4,000. So we got until June to get it, but if you want to contribute to that in any way, let us know. We will uh, greatly take whatever uh, you'd like to give to us. So uh, also turning our attention to serving the community around us, uh, we have two opportunities coming up. Next Sunday uh, is our opportunity to serve at Amy's House of Hope. And that is, again, that's not, we're not just feeding food and talking with people now. We're doing full-on church services and full sermons, and uh, they'd like to add some music elements as well. And so that is next Sunday from 3 to 5.30. Now, that means you get home a little bit earlier, but that means we have the cook here at the church a little bit earlier. Uh, so if you would like to be involved with any of that, please see Christina Cartwright or Lauren Valentine, and we will get you the information that you need. And then 
the next Saturday, December 23rd, is our opportunity to do free gift wrapping at Mercer Mall. We have signs. I've ordered signs with arrows that tell people exactly how to get to us. Um, if you're going to be in town, please make a point to hang out for a little bit. You don't have to be there the whole time, but maybe schedule some time to come and wrap some gifts and meet our community and just let them know that, that there's a God who loves them and there's a church here who loves them as well. I think those are all my announcements for now. Um, if you would, if you're able, would you stand together as we pray and move into musical worship today? God, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for this Christmas season. Uh, for, for many of us, it brings feelings of warmth and joy and, and all kinds of, of memories, some good, some bad, and maybe some in between. But we also want to take a moment and set aside our personal feelings to reflect on exactly what it is that we're celebrating. We're celebrating the fact that you came to be God with us, Emmanuel. The fact that you left heaven to come and to be a person, to live among us and, and tell us about a God who loves us and help correct us on the things that, that we had gotten wrong or misunderstood. But God, that same sentiment flows even today. We just ask that you would be with this service and with each of us May we hear what you have to say through these songs and through your word in just a few minutes. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
During this Christmas season, it's a celebration not of just the coming of Jesus, but that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. He wasn't just with us on earth 2,000 years ago, but because we serve a risen Savior, he's here with us now. And I know you hear that a lot at Christmas. Emmanuel means God with us. But I, I hope that whatever you came in concerned about today, maybe it's just getting everything done. I've talked to a couple people. I don't have anything done for Christmas and that kind of thing. Or maybe it's something that's a whole lot bigger and you just feel so alone right now. Please know that you are not alone because God is with us in the middle of it all, whatever it is. God is here, and this is a celebration of that. So we're just going to sing this song, Emmanuel.
as we're being seated, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this beautiful time of worship today in this most beautiful season. God, we thank you that you wanted to be with us and that you love us just so much. I can't imagine sending my son to go die for somebody else, but God, that's what you did. And Lord, thank you for loving us, for experiencing everything that we experience, God. We're so grateful. Lord, I pray that you would continue to open our hearts this Christmas as we hear the old familiar story, but I pray that you would reveal new truths to us. And Lord, we pray for our kids as they're dismissed to Children's Church in just a moment here, that they would hear the stories maybe for the first time and learn to love and trust you. And God, I pray for everything else that's said and done in the rest of the service. Lord, bless it in your name. Amen. Okay. Well, kids, it's that time. It's time to dismiss to Children's Church. But remember, parents, if you send your kids, you got to get them at the end. And we are going to take a few minutes and greet one another. And so go ahead and shake hands with somebody that you haven't had a chance to say hello to yet. everybody. We have a very special treat for you this morning. Um, we have a couple of Bluefield University students joining us today. Y'all know Abby, and uh, Abby's finals are done, and now Abby has a little bit of time. A little bit? Yeah, yeah. So 
Um, she's usually too busy to sing for us in the middle of the semester, and she brought her wonderfully talented friend, Laura Horton, who's a senior at Bluefield University. Uh, theater, music, she, she does a little bit of everything, singing, dancing, you know. Um, but I, pr I pray that you'll be blessed. They're going to uh, bring two Christmas numbers for us this morning. We're about to sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, surprise. But um, I, when we were talking about what we wanted to sing for you guys today, um, this was one of the first songs that came to my mind. Um, because when you think about the lyrics of this song, it was written from the perspective of Israel looking forward to the first coming of their Messiah. And, you know, they were held captive by the Roman government and by so many other different empires um, for hundreds and hundreds of years. And, you know, not to try to get doom and gloom or political or anything like that, but, you know, even right now Israel is going through a similar thing. And so when I thought about this song, um, I kind of just view it as our own prayer for Israel because even now we look forward to the second coming of our Messiah. It's not something that any of us should be afraid of. Um, a lot of people are terrified of it, but really it's something that should give us hope. And it's something that we should long for and look forward to. And so even now we, we hope and pray that Jesus will come back. And we know that he will. Um, but as we sing this song, that's the place that I'm coming from. So I hope that it will give you a different perspective on what you're about to hear. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the sun. 
Um, some of you may know this next song. Some of you might not. If you don't, that's okay. Surprise. You get a new song. Um, we're singing the song He Will Hold Me Fast by the Gettys. Um, and this is a song that I've always really loved because it's really special to me. Um, because I think that all of us who are Christians or have been Christians for a little while can really relate to what this song says, that no matter what we do, Christ will always hold me fast. And that's not really language that we usually use. That doesn't make a ton of sense to us. Um, but what that means is that regardless of what we do, Christ will always remain and he will always be with us. He will always have us in his hand. There's nothing that we can do to change that. And really it's only through the work of Christ that we will ever have salvation or any of the benefits of a relationship with Christ because nothing that we do can earn us salvation. And that's just the truth. But regardless of when we fall into temptation or not, Christ is always with us and he'll always remain with us. So I hope that this next song is an encouragement to you. When he comes 
Thank you so much, Abby and Laura. Thank you. Awesome songs. We're going to move forward as part of our Advent, uh, Advent services. We like to do a little Advent reading. Today, it'll be brought to you by Chuck and Michelle Harvin. What are humans that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them, yet have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor? You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. The greatest caretaker, the one who knows every need, the one who honors others, the one who has thoughts and feelings toward us. This is our God, and he is love. He put on flesh and left his heavenly home to live with us, to see us, hear us, and touch us. He came to know and experience the very existence of human needs. He came to be close. He is the ultimate giver and gifts good of, sorry, giver of good gifts, the best gift being himself. But what is the essence of the best gift unless it is received? Receive the person of Jesus. Receive and keep receiving him every day until he comes for his second advent. He has loved you, cared for you, and chosen you before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. Today, we like, as we light the candle of love, may we know that the flame burning in his heart has and will always be for us. Thank you, Chuck and Michelle. I asked Chuck to read before, and he's like, I don't read too good. And I knew he was just trying to get out of it. <clears throat> no. So this morning, we move into our second week of Advent. And uh, I'm excited to spend the next few weeks reflecting on that, this, uh, as the saying goes, reason for the season. Uh, and reflecting on Jesus' first coming that we read about in the scriptures. And, and I know that I mentioned this uh, the last couple of years and last week if you were here, but I'm going to give you a definition anyway to make sure we're all on the same page. The word Advent simply means arrival. And we use it most often when we talk about Jesus coming on earth as, as a baby over 2,020 years ago. And all of our Advent sermons and the, the series or the topics and readings have been provided to us uh, this, this year by the CWC, which is a women's ministry of the Church of God. Uh, and we've been using their materials the last few years for a, a few different reasons. But the biggest is because it kind of gets us uh, in unity with a bunch of other Church of God congregations all around the world uh, at this time of year. So you could go to any of our churches, uh, mostly in North America, but all around the world. And you could potentially be hearing the same message on the same topic. And that's just kind of a cool thing that I like us to be a part of. And this year, all of the sermon titles and thoughts have been written by Reverend Jeremy Dixon, a pastor at Center of Hope LA uh, out in Inglewood, California. So all of the topics are his, all the, the words, you're stuck with mine. Uh, but let's pray together and move forward. God, we just thank you for what you've already said to us today. God, you've spoken to us through the Psalms and through the, the Advent readings. And God, we just ask that you would continue to speak to us this morning. If we can sense your presence here, we know that you are with us all the time because you are Emmanuel. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, last week, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about how God chose Mary to be the vessel for the Messiah to come. That's a big deal. And, and he chose this young woman. And in her time, in her society, she was 
unremarkable as far as we can tell. We don't have any descriptions of her. We, we, we don't have any descriptions of her family. We don't know if she came from a rich and powerful family. Probably not. We don't know if, if there was anything special about her or if she just looked like every other young lady walking around Israel, Bethlehem at the time, right? Or uh, Galilee at the time. But we, we don't know. She was unremarkable as far as we can tell. And in her society, she would have been considered even less than unremarkable uh, because she was a, a woman. She was considered a, a little bit less than human, a piece of property in the midst of transaction from her father's house to Joseph's house. And although we don't know why God chose her specifically, the, God didn't reveal that to us in Scripture, we don't know why he chose Mary. He could have chosen anybody, and he chose her. And it, but it probably has to do with her humility and her obedience. We, if you read the story, you see that she has a couple clarifying questions when the angel shows up. And she's like, well, how's this going to work? And he explains. And then she's like, all right, let's do it. And she is humble and obedient. And that's what God seeks even now in his children. And that's you and me. And frequently the people who embody those qualities are the people who don't think of themselves as remarkable. I mean, it's, it's hard to be humble if you think that you're better than everybody else, right? At best, these people who are humble and obedient would consider themselves to be average, everyday people. But God sees them. And the Christmas story teaches us that God sees and blesses even those who are average, and and especially those who everyone else would look at as less than, the ones who most of us overlook or dismiss. And we see that again in our readings for today. Uh, in Luke uh, chapter 1, we get the story of how the angel appears and delivers this news to Mary. And, and then she goes to her cousin Elizabeth's house and we get a little peek at who, you know, John the Baptist and all that other stuff. And in Luke chapter 2 is where we get the actual the birth of Jesus. You know, they have to go back to Bethlehem because of the census and she's riding and then they give birth because there's no room. And many of you know the story. But a lot of us stop there. But we're going to pick up right after Jesus is born in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 8. It says, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. And this is nearby where Jesus was born, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. And there's a reason that shows up. Uh, every time an angel shows up, people are terrified, and it's because they, they don't look like us. Like if you watch Touched by an Angel like I did, you think that angels look like Roma Downey. That's not what the Bible says they look like. Um, go home and Google biblically accurate angels, and you will see why everyone is terrified. Moving on. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, that's Bethlehem, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Now that word Messiah, that's the one that they have been waiting for to show up ever since the Old Testament. All the prophets talked about it, and it's been thousands of years that they haven't heard a single word from God, and yet the angel shows up to these shepherds in the middle of the night in a field, and say, hey, that Messiah that everybody's been waiting for, he's here. This will be a sign to you. It's like, this is how you're going to know which one it is. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Apparently, not very common even back then. Babies don't get born and put in mangers, right? So they'll be like, you see a baby in a manger? That's the one. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel. We sing that those songs. We talk about heavenly host. Um, and when I was a kid, this, you misunderstand lyrics all the time, right? Like I always thought angel, like hark the herald angel. I thought herald was just his name, right? But a herald is someone who delivers news, right? You figure those things out as you grow up. And, and so I want to help some of you. Maybe you don't know what heavenly host means. It means a whole bunch of angels, 
all of them. Uh, another word for that is heavenly armies. So just, just legions upon legions of angels are now showing up in the sky. So you had one angel that's terrifying, and now you got all of the angels. As far as we know, there's no number. It's like thousands upon thousands. And they all show up and appeared with the first one, and now they're all singing, right? That's terrifying, right? But they say, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. The birth of Jesus, the Savior of the world, wasn't announced with grand fanfare to the influential and powerful people in their society, right? We, we find out later and some other, when the, when the wise men show up about two years late to the party, they go to King Herod. The king didn't even know that there was a baby born. Like they, they knew about the prophecies, but he's like, okay, so the king of the Jews has been born. Where is it? Tell me about it. Like God didn't announce this to the kings or the rulers or the priests or prophets. That's not who God chose to send all these angels to. Instead, God chose to share this momentous occasion with the humble, outcast, and insignificant shepherds of the fields. They were the first, besides Mary and Joseph, of course, to receive the incredible news of the birth of God's son. This decision demonstrates God's compassion for those that are sometimes marginalized or forgotten. It reflects his desire to bring redemption and hope to everyone, regardless of their status or reputation. The humble and unassuming shepherds were the first people to bear witness to the good news of Jesus' birth. And so you might be thinking, Jeff, why, what do you mean shepherds and marginalized forgotten people? Like how do those things, they're just shepherds, right? They're just, there's lots of shepherds. They were just regular people. Don't they have kind of an important job taking care of all these sheep? Like Jesus talked about shepherds and stuff all the time. Weren't they kind of important people? And those are all good questions. Thank you for asking. Before Jesus showed up and talked so much about shepherds and used them as so many examples, they weren't very popular people. And many, maybe some of you have heard some of this stuff before, but the truth is shepherds were the lowest of the low. In their society, they were barely considered people. They were just a step above Mary as far as most of their people were concerned. They, they, the life of a shepherd was a hard one, right? We, we, we see them in this story that they are outside at night keeping watch with animals. They didn't have pop-up tents. There was no glamping back then, okay? You're outside with animals all the time, daytime, nighttime, whatever. And I'm sure there were lots of shepherds who took different shifts, of course, but these are the night shift shepherds. They're not even the daytime shepherds. Think about that, right? These are not... not awesome people, right? They, they are taking care of other people's property. They don't own those sheep. They're not theirs. They are hired or enslaved by the rich and wealthy people to take care of their animals, their stuff. If anything happened to a sheep, the shepherds were punished for it. And I don't mean that their pay was docked. They bore that on themselves, oftentimes in their bodies, in many, I mentioned in many cases, they were slaves. And part of that is because nobody wanted to do that job. I mean, who would want a job where you had to live outside all the time? 
Think about sunburn, wind burn, cold. They don't have like cold burn, like freezer burn, I don't know, right? Hot, rain. And despite what sometimes we think of when we think of Israel, it does snow there too. So you got all of the weather, all of the elements, and they're outside all the time. So, but not only are you always camping, but you had to care for animals that are notoriously dumb and difficult to keep track of. This is not an easy job. But these guys, they're, and think about it, they live outside. So even by the hygiene standards of the day, they're kind of nasty. They smell bad. If you've ever been around sheep at any of those petting zoos, like sheep are kind of smelly. Imagine living with them outside all the time, right? The, these guys are, are gross. They're, they're dirty, smelly, and, but these guys, these nasty night shift shepherds, these dirty, smelly, grimy, outcast, barely considered human beings, these are the people that God sends all these angels to in the middle of the night. These are the people that God chooses first to reveal the Savior of the world. So maybe you've noticed a pattern. We have an insignificant Mary and Joseph. We have, now we move on to insignificant shepherds in the middle of the night. And what do the shepherds do? Well, not only are they the first people to get the news, these are the first people to actually share the gospel. Did you ever notice that? I know many of you have maybe read this over and over. And, and like I said last week, I've read the Christmas story tons and tons of times, but there's always new things that stand out to me. And this one caught me uh, in Luke chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. It says, when they had seen him, they go and see the little baby. They spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. They were probably amazed, first of all, that shepherds were talking to them. Like, who let the shepherds into the town? Like, because they're not supposed to do that. They're supposed to be with the sheep, right? But so they were amazed, first of all, that shepherds were talking. And now shepherds, right? And you only got this job if you flunked out of school. Like, this is not... Like, these are not considered to be smart, biblically literate people. And all of a sudden, the shepherds are like, hey, you remember all those prophecies? They came true. The Messiah's here. And people are like, you don't even know how to spell Messiah. What are you doing? Like, and they were all amazed at what they had to say. But they were the first people to see the baby and the first people to tell people the Messiah has come to save you. The very first people to share the gospel are these shepherds. A lot of times we think, oh, well, maybe it was Paul or the apostles or the, you know, the disciples. They went and told people about Jesus after he went. Before Jesus was even a day old, people are spreading the gospel, and it's these shepherds. And so we're going to close with this thought. I know it's a little bit short today. That's all right. As we contemplate this remarkable event, as we spend time looking at all the Christmas trees and the lights and the presents and all of that stuff, as we spend time singing the songs and preparing the food, and hopefully we stop in the midst of that and think about Jesus and read this story and what actually happened. As we think about this event, especially this passage, it kind of can challenge our ideas, maybe, of value and importance. Shepherds were not important people. They were barely people at all. Mary was not an important person before God chose her. She wasn't even considered a person at all. Most of these people were completely ignored, perhaps mistreated, but definitely not held to any special, not granted any special treatment, not, nobody would look twice at them. And yet those are the people that God chooses. They were valuable and important to him. And probably the rest of the people around them missed it. See, God's ways are different from ours. 
a lot of the world around us tells us to grind and work and and try to be somebody like to be important you got to do these things but God lifts and exalts the humble like we see with the shepherds and Mary we must embrace this idea that God loves to use the improbable and sometimes the undesirable people to accomplish his purposes it's not the people who have all their stuff together or at least the people who pretend to have their stuff together so as we think about that first may it bring comfort and peace to you that if you're like man I'm just a nobody great that's exactly who God's looking for but let's be filled with joy Let's be filled with humility as we recognize that God can use anyone to bring hope and light into the world, no matter how insignificant they may seem to the people around them. And that gives us hope that we can be used to do the same. Would you stand if you're able? going to sing a song. I, I know that we've done it last year, so maybe if it sounds familiar, sing along. If not, just look at the words and may this resonate with you. As we close our service today, this is also our response time. If maybe there's something that you want your church family to be praying with you about, come on down and let us know. We'll gather around you and pray for that. Maybe you and God have some something that you guys are working on privately. This is a time to do as well this is your chance to respond however God is leading you take a listen some other verses and things to that song hopefully you'll you'll experience that maybe one will resonate with you this season but if you feel less than just know you're in good company and maybe you're right where God wants you and something amazing is about to happen let's pray together and be dismissed you can share this good news to the world today God we just thank you for using the people who don't seem to have things together, using the, the people that nobody else would look at, nobody would give a second thought to. God, many of us spend so much time striving to quote unquote be somebody, whatever that means. God, you just want us as we are. We ask that you would give us the courage we need to step forward and and the humility we need to be used by you, not just this Christmas season, but all year round. Just like those shepherds were the ones to go share the gospel, many of us are afraid to do that because we feel like we don't know enough or we're not smart enough or we're not pastors, we're not preachers, we don't know how to talk to people. But these shepherds, all they knew were sheep, but they knew what God had said and what God had done. So may that encourage us to share what you've done in our lives, maybe even today. It's in Jesus' name we pray.